Okay, what you people are about to see is very little bow hunting. This hunt took place 20 years ago on a moose hunt. It's 50 years old. And um, it's what Teddy Roosevelt wanted you to do. He wanted you to, when he founded the Boone and Crockett Club of North America, he wanted you to get out of your back 40 in your comfort zone and go into different cultures and different uh, scenarios of hunting of different animals and it'll make you a lot better person you'll always have something to talk about whether you killed something or not and at that time I was using these autumn horned arrows which were the that was the arrow of the time anyhow uh, to get into it when you go on a guided hunt don't think you're, you're in uh, any good graces because when you put yourself in these adventurous areas of, on the North America continent, you can find yourself in a life and death situation in an instant. Now, the basic thing you're going to have to have, this was king of the mountain clothing. Three layers of wool woven together. Almost waterproof, but not quite waterproof. This was my survival gear. Without these clothing, you would probably froze to death. The other thing that was really high tech at the time, because the guy that I got there, when I got there, he knew very little about the lake. And it was a GPS unit. And I, he didn't even know where the, where the lodge was when the sun went down. And I brought out my GPS unit and showed him the direction of where the base camp was. And he had no clue what this little instrument was. Yeah, a lot of times I'm down on technology, but this, this one was a life-saving situation. No cell phones, no nothing, and this GPS, or not this particular one, but the same brand, brought us back to base camp. Other than that, he would have been wandering around in the dark, because he'd only been there. He said he'd only been on that lake two, two, two times uh, uh, prior to when he took me out. Okay, your clothing was really essential. This was king of the mountain. And I contribute to saving my life, but if we would have got dumped out of that boat, I would have had a lot of weight on, and I'd have probably went to the bottom. The other thing is, you better have your own personal safety gear with you. The guide had absolutely none. Here's what we had: this little saw, or this saw right here. We sawed it up to wiki up. We got things going. He had a small saw, but this outperformed it. We got the wood sawed up. Got the fire going, because I had fire starter material with me. And I also had some of these, uh, I can't find them now. They're in a, these little granola bars, I had three of them. So we shared them overnight, and we had substance to eat. Plus, I also had a at that time, I'm drinking tea now, but at that time I had a bottle of Coca-Cola with me, which sure helped out. But that's, that pack, I can't emphasize this enough. This pack is your lifesaver. You put your life-saving essentials in that, I don't care who you're hunting with, because if he goes down, you go down. If you don't have that GPS in your pocket, you don't even know where you're at because it's foreign land to you. So as you sit there and watch this video, you'll see nothing killed in it, but it was a learning experience far greater than any deer hunting experience that you're going to run into in North America in your back 40. That's what Teddy Roosevelt wanted. He wanted to get you out of your safe zone, into a different culture, into a whole different terrain, and see how you handled that. And when you do that, you'll be a better person. And when you sit down at the table to talk, you'll have something to talk about that's worth talking about. So that's it. But as you sit here and watch this video, I just want to go over what you're doing. Basically, it was a guided hunt, but yet you better take your own provisions with you. Because don't trust anybody with your life. If you do, it could cost you your life. Well, that's it. Sit back and watch the video. And like I said, it was more of a survival course, uh, seeing no moose. And 
to be honest with you, we were hit with two, basically it was two foot of snow in that bush. So uh, just one of those freak storms that you have to be prepared for mentally and physically to endure. So sit back and watch the video and uh, hope you can learn something from it. But most of all, you make sure you're prepared when you go on those high dollar hunts. That's it. Just landed at 1 o'clock, be 2 o'clock out of time. Is that one of your apartments? Where is it? Okay, it's down on the bottom. Norwalk, Northwest Territory. Got a big bag. So, this is the beginning of the venture. Got your gear loaded up in these pickups. Got one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven hundred. Three weeks ago was 112. Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to remind you that all still here. Dave, I talked to him. He's been up here four times. This is a pre-boarding announcement. He's from Wisconsin. Another Wisconsin hunter. I've been traveling with small children. It's done a little well, raining. Nice, nice temperature out here. Very nice temperature. I hope the planes are better than the trucks. First impressions are of any, any value. I'm highly, highly, highly disillusioned about what I see up here already. A lot of money for such a poor operation. But I'll know more a week from today. Going rifle hunting? Yeah, rifle. Right. The one bull they said was 46 inches. That, they, that bull that they had oh, here? Was that 46? Yeah, 46 inches. Be bad. He said it charged him. Oh, really? Yeah, they were calling at it. They were, the caller and him were in the boat. Yeah. And even after he shot it, it yeah. kept running right at the boat. Oh, we are. Okay. Are you from Iowa? Yep. Yep. This weather would be perfect today if it was a hunting day. Yeah, it sure would be. Well, here we go out. To the lake, fly out, raining a little bit, overcast. Okay, so it's Linda and Ron and Don. Right. Okay, I'll get uh, Ron up front. Let's see if you can find something here. In the right seat, we'll get the other ones in the back. Is it freeze up here tonight? No, in the... Uh in the freezer. Oh, It'll freeze. Oh, freeze. Ah, perhaps we uh, right now we're clouded right in and a lot of rain, so uh, the clouds keep the, the warm air down below, and it's probably going to stay above freezing tonight. Right now. The clear night you got to worry about. Huh? The clear nights is when it gets cold.
Yeah. Okay. Meet everybody here. Okay, there we go. Andrews Lake Lodge. Two thousand. Moose hunt. It's about six thirty Iowa time. These people transported all this stuff back in here on my plane. Rainy old day. Some of the sheds that they had out here. Well, this is Sunday morning, October 1st. Look what blew in overnight. There's probably five, six inches of snow out there. It, uh, what a bummer. Wind howling. How are you doing there, partner? Oh, just getting up, take a little video. <laughs> Feel better now. Fire okay? That was Rod. He just come to check on me. I had got something, stomach flu or something. Nerves, you never know. <laughs> then when you wake up and see this, you just, a lot of transition. Last week it was like 90, 90 degrees last Sunday. And here it is, you know. Uh, and you can see how deep the snow is out there. You know, that's all in one day. We got a nice cabin in here. They got a nice wood burner burning warm. But, uh, good provisions. Electricity. You can charge up your camcorders if you wanted to. A couple beds if you partnered up, you'd have a couple beds. And, uh, Real nice operation, real nice. And that makes it nice right there. It, uh, yeah, I had a touch of stomach flu or something, so. Yeah, like I say, this is what's out the window right now. Oh, I ain't in no big hurry to get out there. There ain't nobody going out on the lake anyway, so it was too. Visibility was too low. But after this break, it's supposed to be good hunting. Maybe by then I'll be up to 100%. Here it is. This is the snow. You can see how high it is on that picnic table. <laughs> that, uh, that's probably a foot deep, 10 inches deep on that picnic table. October 1st, year 2000. Moose hunt. This is my cabin. Nice little cabin, got wood burner in it, got it all to myself on the outside. Good 10 inch foot snowfall. Nobody's leaving camp today. I got a feeling quite a bit better. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon now. So, like I said, <laughs> wherever I go, the weather's sure to follow. Oh, we'll go on in and see what we can see. There's Kelvin. Yeah. He the guide. Mm -hmm. Welcome to winter. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Hey, you, you, neither one of you guys look like Santa Claus. I'm afraid to call you elves. He's on his way. <laughs> writing letters all, all year. Uh, you can join the thermometing competition here. Yeah. Well, hold up. That guy there, he's ahead, ain't he? Is that, is that the new position, toboggan uh, position? The practicing for luge. The, the lay down? Yeah. Uh, Olympics coming up. Winter Olympics. Uh, Andrew Lake. Well, they'll have plenty of snow when they get here. <laughs> oh, well. You would think that the Winter Olympics, Canadians were always in the snow. We'd be really good at that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Eat stuff of that conversation. That would be Monday morning, the 2nd of October, up here at Andrews Lake, Alberta. Moose hunt. Got a little delay, <laughs> but who knows? Yesterday we didn't hunt. Yeah, we were in camp yesterday, but 
it, it, that's the way it goes. You have to be here. That's why you're here for a whole week. You know, for the one day deal, it'd be more like uh, Kmart. <laughs> walk in, walk out. <laughs> so, well, we'll see what happens the rest of the day. Yeah, you'd definitely be snowed in. This is what you get. Like I say, last week at this time, I was walking around in my shorts back home. You won't be doing that now. Getting ready to go. Shouldn't take this long. It'll warm up the video. Cool. Look at that lake. Andrews Lake, October 3rd, year 2000, sunrise. First morning I've seen the sun come up in four or five days. Yeah. Could be the day, October 3rd. Roughly 7. No, oh, it's 7.30ish. This is my guide, Rod. We're going to kill one today, right? We'll get one down today, eh? Yeah, that's what's going on. Well, it's Tuesday night. Been relevantly slow. You can sort of see how deep that snow is. I want to try to, you see where we cut that trail at? You get across there, that's, you're walking two feet deep, snowpack. It's uh, been pretty tough walking. I suppose if you see a moose up here, you know, it's a bull, it'll probably be a real good one, but I don't know. I'm not by any means running up no white flag, but it really <clears throat> is not quite what I expected. On uh, you know, absolutely no wildlife at all. Same way I asked, same way in Alaska. All those big areas are really not conducive to wildlife as much as you think. I can find more wildlife in Clark County and in an hour and you can in these vast wildernesses you would virtually starve up here if you're hunting for food if you didn't kill a moose you'd never get through the winter it, uh, this is really deep snow I'll set my bow over here and you can get an idea of it well on second thought I ain't gonna set my bow the snow's too deep it, uh, it, it's it's a good 24 inches deep out in there. No, so, no moose sign whatsoever. None. No calling. No vocalization. No sightings. Um, tough hunt. 
short hut. Looks like another storm might be brewing. Oh, well, Cooper and Rod. Rod's having, his, having an orange. He been a pleasant gentleman to hunt with. He, uh, he, he hunts hard. That's all you can ask for. Grand, grand fellow. Uh, oh, where did he go? He, he said he's seen a big one. <laughs> oh, oh well, he can get better. Just hang in there. Well, we're going in for the night. We didn't see anything. And, uh, just not seeing no sign. The you know, moose are a pretty large animal. And if you're a hunt them, you're definitely going to see pretty large sign. And uh, the old sign, there's just no browse, no sign that they've actually even been here all summer that I've seen. I mean, uh, moose leave big sign. Uh, and I don't know, you know, they could be a mile away from this lake. But who knows? Probably tomorrow, Wednesday, some day. But, uh, boy, if it, you got out here on the nighttime, you'd have a hard time getting back if you didn't know how to get in, back into camp. So, away we go. Well, Wednesday morning. Just finished up a set. Rod's been calling. Got up here and it's looked fairly decent moose habitat, but I don't know, not much sign. Big country, a lot of snow. Plane sounded like it finally got out. It's been in here since Saturday. Sun's out a little bit now. But that don't mean nothing. Looks like another front coming in from the other direction. So I'm gonna walk out of here, try to do some filming. Show you how deep the snow is in here. Uh, real deep, tough going. Try to stay up high. Stay out of that stuff down there. It's getting a little cool out now. It's going to be about 20. Back in the boat, Wednesday morning. Miserable condition. Deep snow in the bush. No sign. No brows. No moose. It looks like it's one of them Fijian ski operations. That's why they don't screen nobody. Don't expect anybody to kill anything. This supper time in the lodge, Wednesday night, uh, roast beef, you name it. Moose. Roast moose. Roast moose. Yeah. Oh, roast moose. Oh, that's appropriate. We had to bring it in on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the lake. Thursday. Thursday morning about 15 after 7. Every morning we got to get the ice out of the boat out of the boat motor so the water pump will pump. It's it harder and harder every day. Notice the big ice. Ice starting to form on the big lake. But it's supposed to warm up today. There's some ducks. Yeah, it's getting quite a bit of ice down here now. The bad part about it is the more ice we get, the less we can go. You'll hear it going under the boat here. Get in, can't get in. It's real hard to get in. I had to break ice all the way up through there with the oars to get in. I'm gonna sneak down here. There might be a bear down here. By the way, this is Friday. Uh, yesterday morning. Well, right after I videotaped, we got to the other side of that camp and Rod stepped in some water and we had to dry his boot out. And in doing so, made a little fire. I uh, heated up the camera. It wasn't very close to the fire at all, but 
it uh, screwed up the, the shutter on this camera, so I just finally ripped it off this morning because I assume clear sky, first time I've seen stars since I've been here. So there's a bear down here on the dock, maybe we go down here we might be able to film it. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Friday morning, last day of the hunt, everything's freezing up up here. The lake that we land on, up at the big lake where we took off at, it's froze up, so we're going to have to land on the Slave River. Uh, winter is here for, for the duration up here in the far great north. Well, it doesn't look like the bear is here today. He's been here. Right there's his poop. He uh, ate himself full. At, uh, and then he's been going right up them stairs right there. Goes right up them stairs and then wanders off up into the bush. Well, this is the first time we've had a southerly wind. The wind is blowing straight out of the south today. This morning, as you can see, the waves are going straight, straight north. Not on the big lake today. We're going up where we went last night. Got, finally got the moose sign. And, uh, this is a huge lake. Flip a coin, find a moose in here. Well, my moose hunt, it's about one o'clock, exactly one o'clock Friday afternoon. Moose hunt come to abrupt end, almost cost two of us our lives out there. Uh, that's the worst I ever been on an open water. Uh, we almost got swamped twice, literally. There's white caps out there, probably, oh, I want to say five, six foot. And uh, uh, we were lucky to get the lee side of this island. Uh, we were just lucky to, this island was here, because uh, when you venture out, I'm going to go around the other side of the island here and show you what I'm talking about. It, it's really blowing. We might be here for the night. So all you guys that think you're going to go on a guided hunt, uh, you better think again about being in preparation and make sure that you're damned ready. Because you have no idea what can be right around the corner at any given moment. I'll go around and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Here's what we're up against. I mean... That's coming straight out of the south. And we're just trying to go south out there with all them white caps. Baby, it ain't gonna work. I thought a couple times we bought the farm. That was really scary. And I'm 50 years old and I've been in a lot of different situations, but that I figured we were going to Davy Jones' locker. Uh, when you get out there in the middle of that big lake, there's no mercy, no let up. It just hammered that boat about all it could handle. And Rod got us here on this island on the back side of it. But there's no way until that wind goes down when we venture out of here. So right now, we're up building up a lean-to. We got a fire going. And it's 1 o'clock. And hope to God, pray to God, in five or six hours that this wind goes down something. I just want to get on that plane and get the hell headed for Iowa. Uh, this is, I don't know, what a week. 
What a week. Should have knew it, Deb. Last Friday. I shouldn't have. I should have just said the hell with it and called it called it even. But I almost didn't come home off of this one. It don't look bad right here, but when you're out there in the middle, it is terrifying. It's worse than Alaska. Uh, the fire is going down. I have to get some more firewood cut. What do you think, old boy? That's as close as I want to come to dying today. Yeah, or any day. Or any day. Uh, yeah, that was a bad one. Well, you had a steady hand at the at the wheel, got us in here. It, uh, it was touch and go there for a while. Very close, very close. You know, one 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 more wave, a little different, and we would have been swamped. Yeah, we were starting to hit the, the like the triple waves. They were just coming a little fat, too fast to to steer to. And yeah. it was getting very close to swamp time. Thank God they put this island here. This ain't garbage island either, is it? No, no, this is farther back. This is uh. We're probably still. Probably close to two and a half miles out of camp. Two miles, two and a half miles away from camp yet, yeah. Yeah, and that's a long way on that rough water. Yeah. Rougher. Well, possible. Yeah. <laughs> we're here. We're here. We're alive. <laughs> yeah, we're going to stay that way because we're going to stay here if we have to curl chipmunks. <laughs> right. right. Okay. Well, we'll endure it. You talk about survival. This here's is a real a, thing. Here's a chance to prove it, eh? Yeah. They'll come looking. Yeah. Well, if it dies, we can get out our Yeah, we don't. They, they probably think we're just still hunting. Yeah. So we ain't got no problem right now. You know, just keep occupied. And we're okay. Just uh, keep busy and keep uh, get ready as though we're going to spend the night. Yeah, it's just like camping out now. I mean, that's yeah. not no big deal. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I don't think we would have endured too good at the bottom of Davy Jones's locker. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> One hell of a week up here in Canada, huh? This has been uh, a bad. Actually, I've been out here all two weeks, and of the two weeks, there was about uh, maybe two good days. Yeah, two good days. Two good days, yeah. The rest was all terrible weather. Terrible wind, snow, rain, everything. Worst you've seen it? Worst I've seen it by a long shot. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll just have to endure. Get on home safe. <laughs> you bet. Okay. That was Rod. We got the fire going. Got a wiki up up there, clothes drying out, and uh, we're alive. Yeah, that's what you do. And you have a little ordeal like we had, you gotta get everything dried out. And uh, Rod's not cooking hot dogs there, he's cooking socks. Yeah. That's we all we got for supper today. Yeah. I'm like, well, we're going to share. I'll get the right one, you get the left one. Which one's the cleanest? <laughs> well, actually, the one that's inside is probably the, the one wearing inside was probably the least clean. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you find out what people are all about when you get on an island with, with them. It, uh, you never can be too prepared, even in the best bluebird days. Yeah. They can just turn the shit up and in a hurry. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Wind came up and we're in trouble. We yeah. were. Looks like we're going to make it now. Yeah, all we got to do is just ride out the storm. Yeah. You know, it's really funny when you look up here and you can see blue sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a problem? What's your problem? Well, mode of transportation, my friend. About six foot waves. Yeah, it's laying right out there is what our problem is. And it hasn't really went down since we've got here and it's coming up 2.30. So we've been here since at least 12.30. So uh, two hour delay, maybe an overnight stay at the Hotel Hilton in Nowhere. But I guarantee if that plane's flying tomorrow, my ass is on it and it's headed to Iowa. Well, it's 4.30 now, we've been out here, we've gone on here roughly around 11.30, and as you can see in here, it's, uh, 
still pretty choppy out there. We got a fire going. We're on the lee side of the hill, out of the wind, and uh, just trying to endure this. Sun's shining bright, beautiful day, not if you're on a lake. And uh, we got our GPS unit, so even if it gets dark and the wind goes down, I can still get us home with that unit that's set up. Right now we're, about, we're right at three miles away from the main camp. And, uh, how of a position to be in. Uh -oh. But that's what happened. So never take a guided hunt for granted. Always be prepared. And this took us out of total surprise. So maybe I'll talk a little more when we get underway. Well, here it is. Friday night. It's 15 after 6. And what I want to show you people is the difference a few hundred yards makes. Now, if the weather was like this, we're on the north side of the island right now. And we would leave. And it looks pretty calm. But we got to take a southeaster direction back to camp tonight. So we're going to walk over here probably no more than no more than 200 yards if that straight line and I'll show you what way lays in front of us we can't afford to get out there it's still white capping at 15 after 6 we cannot get out there and get all wet again we got 3 miles to go we're going to have to ride this one out it's still white capping it hasn't really done bad. There's the moon in the far distance. Good. That'll be nice. We do got some moon. That's the best sign I've seen all day. So if we do get a calm, maybe we can have some moonlight going across there. But it's moving right along for that small of a boat. But just, that's just less than 200 yards, you see why we're held up here. Well, it's 7 o'clock. Wind really hasn't let up. It's still white capping out there. Uh, I guess we're here for the night. I mean, we got heat and fire and we made a good mean to there. But, uh, oh, that'll be Hotel Hilton for the night. Burning the same wood, still on Andrews Lake. The only thing we're missing is a little bit of comfort from a sleeping bag, but we'll have to endure on that. Comes into play on how good your clothes are. I've always said that. And uh, what you wear on your back could be what you survive in overnight. And this is definitely a good situation for that. Hey, I'm going to take a walk down here. Nightfall is coming. It's not no big deal. You just like hunting. Been nice to head. Sleeping bag, but <laughs> we got space blankets, that's what they're for. And we'll just have to endure this tonight. And, uh, you back home, you can judge for yourself. We're hoping and praying, but right now we can't get out there and get swamped and get wet. I got my GPS fired up. We know how to get back, but ain't much change. Moon's a little brighter. Seven o'clock. I don't know, after this morning, that scared me and it scared Rod, and I don't believe it. Believe it. You still see the trees up there. They're still bending pretty strong. Uh, we don't want a calm wind, but we do have a little gut fear. 
from what we went through this, this morning, and you can still see at 7 o'clock, out on this side of the lake, it's still, still white capping, it's not your raging white water river, but uh, if you had a raft, it would probably be a lot safer. It, it, would, it would ride up and over these, but on a boat, it just wants to swamp the boat. You get the twist in it. And uh, I thought we were going to take the mother load this morning. Well, I don't know if you can see this. Taking a pig and a poke. Aurora Borealis. Northern Lights. Oh, we got that out of the deal. I think the wind, it's 20 after midnight. Hope this comes out. Here we are, 12.30. Decided elected to stay all night. Got a real good campfire going. Been burning up a lot of wood, <laughs> but that's what it's here for. Wind's still blowing. Ah, I just have to wait it out. Feel warm. I'm not cold or nothing, but. A little depressed. Beautiful sunrise. Everybody, <laughs> welcome to Hell uh, that Survival boat, in Northern Alberta. Yeah, that boat about went under yesterday. <laughs> I mean, it got hit both ways, and it it was right at the water. You know what I mean? The, yeah. the edge of it. Oh yeah. And uh, it was that, when that island showed up. I didn't think we were going to get out of there, actually. Yeah, I... The way it was tossing us around. Yeah, I mean, it, it had that boat going from maximum, you know, side to side. We were behind that island, and then we... Yeah. We got to get in there. 